Hello and welcome back to International Journeyman here with Australia. Last time out we certainly participated in the World Cup. So many wonderful memories for the nation but we mustn't dwell on the past. Today we make our way through the rest of the season until we get to a more realistic opportunity for us the Asian Cup. Can we win our first piece of silverware needed for the challenge or will we be heading straight to the job center? Now just a note to say that as I play this series I will be holidaying quite a lot to get between games. As an international manager there is just absolutely nothing to do between matches. I mean you can attend games I suppose but that's extremely boring and provides no information that can't be obtained from scout reports. And what's also boring is pressing continue 4.6 million times. I didn't notice it actually happened but we are now down to 52nd in the world rankings so we're apparently worse than Ireland which I would say is fair enough. I then just get offered an interview with Cardiff. Clearly Vincent Tan is impressed with that World Cup performance. I decline because I don't have time for all the extra work and travel, strictly international management only. Fulham don't get the memo, obviously. Is there any way I can just put some sort of automatic reply on here? In March, we have a couple of friendlies with Oman and China. We have Oman in the group at the Asian Cup, so this could be useful for us or more likely for them. I keep pretty much the same squad and I really should have just dropped the lot as we lose 2-1. Definitely some FM 23-ing in terms of the defenders performances but still I'm not exactly optimistic for when we do get to the real thing in the summer. We get a 0-0 with China after this which is technically better and is a better performance but still not remotely good enough. I think I just have to accept that this squad is just not that great. When we get to May and need to name the tournament squad, I can't exactly make wholesale changes. There's no one who'd be a massive improvement who isn't already here. I drop Alding Hrustic from the initial squad as his performances and finishing have been lacking in every game so far. From the final squad, I drop our Mabil as he just hasn't performed either. Craig Goodwin is the only new name selected. Massimo Luangu and Guan Kwol are also missing from the World Cup as we can only take 23 this time. We arrive at the hotel, hopefully the air conditioning is working. I'd quite like to do a team meeting to motivate them to actually win some matches but it doesn't give me that option. Maybe they forgot to build a meeting room in this hotel. Our warm up game is against Curaçao, hopefully we can actually get what would be only our second win and we do, we actually play well and we actually score goals. A positive result to take into the tournament we kick off the group stage against Oman. The media apparently think they're the weakest team in the group, so uh, it doesn't bode well we've already lost to them. I don't think we're good enough to win the tournament, but if we can at least play like people who have seen a football before, that would be great. Here is the initial lineup. Ryan, Bayic, Suta, Dejanek, Strain, Moy, Irvine, Rogic, Economides, Goodwin and McLaren. We kick off at 5pm and allegedly it's 24 degrees Celsius. Still, I feel like I need a health bar displayed here. We have a couple of early sighters before Economides sends it down to McLaren who has a give and go with Goodwin and then calmly slots the ball into the net. We're actually leading a competitive match. Not long after we come forwards again and it's the same combination as we go 2-0 up. I can barely believe it. Just before the break, Oman venture forwards for the first time and a simple long ball totally confuses the defence and who knows what Ryan is thinking. 2-1, extremely stupid. In the second half we have several chances which somehow don't go in. Dejanek's header being cleared off the line and then Rogic sees this effort hit the post. An Oman equaliser feels inevitable but thankfully it doesn't come and we hold on to actually win. A great impact from Goodwin there. When we face Q8, it's 2 p.m. and the temperature has increased to 32 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure how accurate that is, but I'm glad to be only on the sidelines. A win here would see us into the knockouts safely. And that looks to be on the cards as 10 minutes in, Aaron Moy unleashes a wonder strike into the top corner. And then shortly after, Rogic is bundled over in the box and McLaren fires home the penalty. 2-0 again. Unfortunately, apparently they don't teach complacency in Australian schools. 
Q8 come forwards and the defense again just stand there as they pull a goal back. I mean, he looks really offside, but there we are. And then just before the break, Alsania comes forward and equalizes as Ryan went to tie his shoe. If he actually had any competition, he'd be being dropped. In the second half, we press to retake the lead and Irvine sees this effort hit the post. Eventually though, we work it neatly and Rogic sends home Economides to slot past the keeper to restore our lead. Boyle then should seal it, but he finds the post as well. I mean, is this ball magnetic? We then cut to a Q80 free kick in an extremely good position, which obviously goes in for another equaliser. It's episode two and I really hate this team. 3-3 three, three, and just look at that ridiculous XG. We should be okay, I think, even if we do lose to South Korea. If we could just make the knockouts, that'd be swell. I don't want to change the team as we have actually started scoring goals, but of course this is FM, so after playing two games with a five day break between them and now a four day break, you would think that they've all played yesterday. Please, SI, for the love of God, let us rest players between international games. I mean, sure, yeah, the heat, but if this was Antarctica, it would be the same. I bring in Cummings and Karasic for this reason. The major problem in this game is that Son is just better than our entire squad combined. He puts them in front 20 minutes in with ridiculous ease. Amazingly, we get a corner and Suter actually equalises, but this joy is short-lived as Son just gets the ball again. I did actually drop the defence deeper, that clearly worked well. But amazingly, in the second half, we get another corner and Suter does it again. 2-2, two -two. are we going to draw at least? No, unfortunately, our defence is about as useful as a chocolate teapot, and we may as well just replace Ryan with a cardboard cutout of Harold Bishop. They make it 4-2 in quick succession through Yong and Lee. But at least our attack seems better, a slick move sees McGree drag us back into it. And then Moy has a prime free kick, which hits the bar. Close, but not close enough. We lose 4-3. Oman do beat Q8 though, so we scrape through to the second round, where we will face Syria. As a lot of third place teams get to go through, China are the biggest team to lose out. The fact that we've made the knockouts attracts Crystal Palace this time. Thanks for the interest, I guess. We should beat Syria on paper, but well, remember Q8? I restore my preferred lineup. Syria have an early chance, which whistles over, but then we take charge of the game. Winning a penalty, which McLaren converts. Irvine then powers through their midfield with a real captain's run, sending in McLaren for his second, and just after the break we work another great chance, and Goodwin pulls it back for McLaren to secure his hat-trick. Syria do have a great effort ruled offside, but that's it. An extremely comfortable win with an actual clean sheet. In the second round there is one big shock as Uzbekistan dump out Iran and we get Saudi Arabia in the quarterfinals. The first three quarterfinals all follow the script so it's up to us to avoid a shock if you can call us losing a shock. Our latest FM weather forecast says it's 31 degrees Celsius for this. I think I'll just sit with my feet in an ice chest. We come forwards early, Economides wins it back high up and feeds McLaren who dispatches his seventh of the tournament. We look really good and create loads of chances to add to this, except obviously we don't score anymore. And then just before the hour mark, our defense are once again caught napping and the Saudis equalize with their first highlight classic. We press for a winner but can't find a way through. With time running out we win a penalty though and McLaren sees his efforts saved. Ugh. The players are all basically dead but we're subjected to extra time. It looks like penalties will decide it but in the 111th minute James Jago gets a prime free kick and bangs it into the top corner. 2-1. Saudi Arabia come forward in response but for once Ryan actually does his job and we hold on to win. Sure would be nice if I could rest the boys before the semi-final in three days time, where we will be facing Japan. I really don't know what to expect here. Japan are not licensed by SI, so they use greyed out players. And our starting 11 are all near death. I should probably rotate, but why would I rotate for a tournament semi-final? When does that ever realistically happen? This very swiftly proved to be the wrong decision, as a corner for Japan is kind of saved by Ryan, only for Bayich to put it into his own net. We do absolutely nothing all game, as the fake Japanese players, who presumably aren't tired because they don't exist, ghost through our exhausted ones to make it 2, 3, 4 and then 5 nil. 
embarrassing. Ryan utterly disgraces himself and the nation of Australia once again. Obviously, I should have at least rotated the defence, but again, it's a semi-final. Why would you, should you, ever not play your best team? The real blame rests at the feet of SI for such poor game design. The media say getting to the semi-finals was good enough, and apparently the players are buoyant. Maybe I'm being harsh, but I tell them that they've underachieved and they all naturally take offense at this, but then they have to refund the fans, so who's buoyant now? Japan go and thump South Korea in the final as well, so at least there's that. And just to underline the absurdity, there are no Japanese players in the team of the tournament because they don't exist. McLaren makes it as our sole representative, and we get to increase our world ranking. The AFA only wanted the semi-finals as well though, so they're quite happy for us to keep our job. But anyway, this wasn't the only international tournament taking place this summer. Nigeria win the African Cup of Nations and the USA win the Gold Cup. Only one vacancy as a result though, Ghana. It's tempting, we could maybe, uh, oh it's gone. Ah oh, well, we will end it there. I'm glad I started this in November because I get the feeling we'll be in for a very long ride. Next time we'll begin World Cup qualification, despite the World Cup being three years away, but maybe there'll be some surprises too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.